अरे सर एक मिनट आओगे अरे बेंजामिन जी नोट्स में कुछ समझ नहीं आ रहा है क्यों है पेशेंट यहाँ पे क्या हुआ उसको करना क्या अपने को कुछ पिक्चर ही नहीं बन रही अच्छा एक मिनट नोट देखता हूँ अरे रोज का ही प्रॉब्लम हो गया सही में हाँ यार दिक्कत तो है इसे नोट्स में कुछ पेशेंट के बारे में समझ नहीं आ रहा है बट प्रैक्टिकली देखा जाए तो अपने नोट्स में भी कुछ ना कुछ कमी रहती है मुझे लगता है अपने को अंकुश जैसे डिस्कस करना चाहिए इस बारे में कि अपने को नोट्स कैसे बनाना चाहिए इसमें ठीक है सर के पास चलते हैं डिस्कस करते हैं अभी हेलो एवरीवन एंड वेलकम टू अनदर सेशन ऑफ रेगुलर क्राइसिस डॉट कॉम माई सेल्फ डॉक्टर अंकुर गुप्ता एंड विथ मी इज माई टीम डॉक्टर हर्ष डॉक्टर बेंजामिन एंड डॉक्टर नितेश हु इज हैंडलिंग द कैमरा नाउ टुडे दे हैव कम अप विथ ए डिफरेंट प्रॉब्लम विच इज वेरी कॉमन इन मोस्ट ऑफ द आई सी यूज लेट्स आज दैम वॉट इज द इशू दे आर फेसिंग यस डॉक्टर हर्ष एंड डॉक्टर बेंजामिन सर सो द इशू वी फेस टूडे वॉज लाइक देर वी राइट डाउन द नोट्स आफ्टर सींग द पेशेंट मेनी टाइम्स बट वी डोंट गेट एन आइडिया आफ्टर ईच शिफ्ट लाइक वॉट इज हैपनिंग विद द पेशेंट एंड वॉट इज गोइंग ऑन इज देर एनीथिंग न्यू विच हैपन इन द लास्ट ट्वेंटी फोर आवर्स सो कैन यू प्लीज हेल्प अस राइट बेटर नोट्स इन द आई सी यू सी राइटिंग नोट्स इन आई सी यू इज एन आर्ट विच एवरीबडी शुड लर्न द नोट्स ऑफ द आई सी यू शुड बी लाइक दैट whosoever is reading your notes whether it's a consultant whether it's a nursing staff whether it's a cross consultation or whether it's your own colleague whenever they read those notes or go through those notes they should get an idea that what is happening with the patient even without looking at the patient itself so yes. you should have a structure to write the notes if you have some idea we can discuss that and we can elaborate on those points so we have some points in our minds so like uh, we'll start with age so okay. the patient then okay. we'll come over it is we'll say go uh, step by step why age is important age is important because certain diseases are prevalent in a particular uh, age group for example suppose uh, you see an x-ray and you see a patch on that x-ray if it is a patch uh, uh, of 25 year old boy x-ray of 25 year old boy and i tell you that the same patch in a patient who is 75 years old so in the first young boy you will look for any infective etiology but in the geriatric group you will think of malignancy in the first point so that's why age is important yes. gender or sex it is important suppose a young lady comes with acute abdomen in the er or icu then you will not think of appendicitis or um, renal stone you will think of ectopic pregnancy and give it a priority in the differential diagnosis that's why age and sex are important other than that you should always ask for the occupation of the patient okay. what occupation whether he is working in uh, some industry lead industry or newspaper industry or farmer this gives you an idea of a background what could be the potential diseases this patient must be having which we should keep in mind in making a differentials like lead poisoning and lead dye poisoning ild sort of okay so, so the first point should be age sex and occupation, occupation. okay so then we can think about the chief complaint which which he presented see in the icu and in the er the way of taking history is a little bit different then what you are taking in the opd basis yes, in the er and icu before jumping directly to chief complaint you should always ask for comorbid conditions okay. why it is important because you have a patient name age sex occupation then you have comorbidities then when you come to chief complaint you can quickly differentiate uh, and make your provisional diagnosis or differential diagnosis based on the comorbidities if you have suppose i'll give you an example suppose a patient comes with jaundice one gives history that this patient was on of ptb pulmonary tuberculosis currently receiving anti tubercular drugs the second one gives history that this patient has also has uh, tuberculosis but he he or she has received the treatment 5 years back so in the first one you will make a provisional diagnosis that it could be drug induced hepatitis yes, in the second one you will think of acute hepatitis due to some other reason yes, so yes. that's a having comorbid condition before chief complaints gives you a better view in making the provisional diagnosis yes, yes. so after 
age, sex, and occupation. Always look for comorbidities. Okay. And then we can go with the chief complaint. Yeah. And no, sir, I think we can. After that, we can go with uh, allergies and. Ah, uh, very important. Very important in the uh, ER and intensive care unit. Always ask for allergies. Whether the patient has drug allergy or some food allergy, and all all in this also. Always ask for if they have energy, what symptom they develop. Okay. See, suppose some a patient say that I only develop itching sensation, or some people will say no. Whenever the, I take this medication, I, it was a life-threatening experience to me. Anaphylaxis. Some pa uh, patients develop vomitings. So, which type of allergy and what are the symptoms they face? So you should always ask. Then uh, in this category, third point. Uh, along with allergy, you should always ask if the patient is on certain important medications, like for example, atrial fibrillation patient on acetron, or a cardiac patient on who has recently gone uh, undergone plasty, and on dual antiplatelet. So, if the patient comes with uh, right-sided hemiplegia or altered behavior, you can think of whether it could be bleed in this patient. If that patient comes with melina or upper GI bleed you can think of that it could be due to antiplatelets which the patient is having and in this category one more thing i would like to add take a history of addictions also put this in same line allergy important medication and addictions yes. ethanol addiction smoking addiction one patient we recently saw was ganja addict so this will also help you frame in the making the diagnosis of liver disease poisoning uh, which will help you in the provisional diagnosis so age sex yes. Occupation, then your comorbid condition, then your allergy, uh, medications, and addictions. addictions. After that, you should jump to chief complaint. Okay. Basically, in ER and ICU, it is not like that. That uh, we are, we'll take 10-15 minutes to take the history and then jump to treatment. The treatment part, management part, and the history part go side by side. Just to elaborate, you people, which the viewers are seeing, we are discussing each point in detail here. So fourth point, we will jump to chief complaint. Chief complaints. Okay, so chief complaint is basically for what purpose the patient has come to the hospital. This is very important. Like patient may be having three, four days of altered behavior. Now today become unconscious. So they brought patient was having fever for three, four days and then become an altered behavior or unconscious came back. Patient was not having any problem, but they became unconscious and they came here. So the primary problem in all these three was patient was unconscious, unconscious. became unconscious. But three, four days history followed by unconscious could be your metabolic disturbances like hyponatremia. Three, four days having fever then unconscious could be encephalitis, meningitis. Sudden onset could be anything, could be acute stroke or any other etiology. So chief complaint, what is the clinical parameter for which the patient has come to ICU? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Then. We can form a differential. Huh, based on all these four points, now you should at least have a few differential diagnoses in priority, okay. which is very important. It is not like that you read a book and make these three, four categories, three, four are my diagnosis. Always have a prioritized differential diagnosis or provisional dictionary. First, I am thinking of high possibility of stroke or high possibility of MI or high possibility of CCF. Then you come, if this is not there, this could be second possibility, this could be third possibility. Because you will plan investigations, you will plan your treatments and your plan, expedite your management plan based on your differentials. If you are thinking that this patient could be a pulmonary embolism, so pulmonary embolism will always get the priority. Yes. So make your differential diagnosis in a prioritized order. Now what will you do? All these points helps you in the ER also and also on the rounds when you are taking the rounds at the bedside. Now once you have made a, your provisional diagnosis or you have confirmed the diagnosis and when you are taking routine rounds in the ICU, very 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 important question or any specific question which every medical student, every person who is taking rounds in the ICU should ask from themselves why this particular patient is in the ICU because if you can pinpoint what is the problem the patient is having for which we have kept in the ICU, you will come up with a plan to bring that patient or move that patient out of the ICU. For example, uh, 
suppose a patient is hemodynamically stable absolutely fine but if you think no this patient is on ventilator we are not able to wean out or this weaning process is in the process yeah. so we cannot move that patient in the from the icu stroke patient every stroke patient is not kept in the icu but if gcs is low even if the gcs is 13 14 but the patient is not able to expedite expel the secretions yes, yes. patient may require tracheostomy so for close observation you have kept in the icu yes sir suppose patient is everything is fine if you chromocytoma patient everything is fine everything is going well but the bp is fluctuating you need to closely monitor the bp that's why you, you are keeping the patient in the icu so everything you have to justify you have to think why we have kept this patient in the icu where the patient is oliguric anything okay. so once that part is corrected you can move out the patient from the icu, ICU. yes now anything else after that so we can think about uh, write down the vitals and what is going on right now um so before that any significant events in the very good device. point very good point yes, sir. so once you have defined that why this particular patient is in the icu the next you should jot down any significant event in the last 24 hours yes. that means in the icu the patient has developed fever in the night yes, would be the first sign of sepsis okay. this patient has an hypoglycemic episode so it's significant the patient has received blood transfusion or undergone a cardiac arrest or some very important investigation has been done there was a ct scan which was done report pending yeah. So, until unless that got clear, we, can't. we had an incident uh, in some other hospital where patient came in acute renal failure, creat was high, everything was high and uh, there was acidosis in the ABG and USG was advised and if the patient oliguria persistent, they planned dialysis. Yes. USG was done, the patient USG was done and simultaneously after few hours his dialysis was also done. Yes. But when the USG report came, it was obstructive pyelonephritis. Oh. So nobody traced that USG. Nobody bothered that there was an USG in the last 24 hours to check the report. If they had done it on the time, then DJ stenting could have been done, dialysis could have been avoided. avoided the treatment yes. first. So any significant event which happened in the last 24 hours should be traced down, should be noted down and should be acted upon. Yes, yes. Then what you were tell, uh, telling that you should come on the vitals. vitals. Yes, See, sir. vitals basically is charted in the hospital ICU chart. It's hour to hour basis and more frequently also. But why it is important to write the vitals in the notes is whenever le some legal matters arises, the vitals gives an idea in the court or in the uh, in discussions that this was the actual condition of this patient. Yes, yes sir. This one. in the issues why this patient in the ICU we have noted down that patient is a non adrenaline adrenaline but when you write the vitals if you write the blood pressure the blood pressure is 100 by 60 on vasopressors this this ml per hour yes, sir. so this gives you an idea no at the time when i saw the patient this was the condition if you write the blood pressure is 100 by 60 and leave it there then everybody will think the patient was fine but if you look 100 by 60 on norad or adrenaline infusion 10 ml per then the scenario becomes difficult yeah. your 90 percent spo2 gives a very good picture but when you write 90 percent spo2 on fio2 100 percent this gives a very different picture so always write the vitals and what things you are requiring to maintain that vitals should come under this category okay anything else after that and then examination of the patient huh here also one important thing I would like to add, you will write, you will do general examination and system wise examination which I see in the nodes, GC5, S1, S2, cardiac status. After vitals, you should think like a consultant when you are taking rounds. You should be more concerned about the primary system or the systems involved. Suppose a patient is of stroke. So after vital, you should jump on to the dead system which is of your concern in that patient. Suppose the stroke patient, you should, you must be worried that what is the GCS of this patient? Has the power improved yes. or not improved? For a patient whom you, you have thrombolized a stroke patient, mm. you will not be worried about that urine output, how much the urine output in the last hour. You will be worried about how is the GCS. Yes. If your patient is acute fulminant liver failure, you will be worried about how is the labs doing? How is the PTNR? How is the encephalopathy? How is the actress that you can concern? 
in a cardiac patient ccr patient who came in cardiac failure you will be concerned how is the uh, chest doing are the capitation decreased yeah. is the patient now more comfortable so chief complaint and the reason for why this patient in the icu you should jump on those system first yes sir and once your those systems are finished then you can do a general examination write down only the positive findings initially you students who are starting they can write down all the findings which are not there no extras no pallor so this will give you an idea to look for them always always examine both the limbs lower limbs to check for dvt in the icu in general examination and then quickly have an overview of other system brain neuro chest heart your feeds gi system how the tolerating feeds motion is whether patient motion passed or not what is the uh, urine output yes. and general examination so you can quickly go a scan on this okay sir so urine output we can put separately also because it in matter it indicates a lot of systems matter how urine out basically intake output balance is very important yes. you always include in this along with general examination other systems and in the uh, below that always write what is the balance intake output balance yes. it is very important because it because i see have lot of issues and usually it is missed in take out what is the balance you need to if the patient is 4 liter positive and 1.5 liter is the output you need to think whether this i should reduce the fluid or patient is in oliguric or still the patient require more fluid the intake output is very important because the effect of fluid comes when you have grossly mis mismanaged yes sir and after 3 4 days you see oh patient is 10 liter positive now is difficult to pull that bring that uh, uh, flu uh, out of the body yes sir so i think we have done or something is left do you think sir how we can uh, move out the patient like what are what are what is my treatment plan for today or so before that we'll go with the investigations of concern ha huh. oh, good one so once you have done all the system involved general examination all the um, systemic examination you should always have a, a column where a investigations of concern whether this issues is patient is hypernatremic or the potassium is uh, slightly low hypokalemic or the urea levels are little bit high so only the concern lab investigation you should write down there that potassium still 6.5 or put a sodium still this 160 to 150 still a major of concern so this can help you not to miss anything yes sir. even if the patient looks fine but if some concern so suppose acute liver failure patient is sitting talking everything is fine but you think prothrombin time is still somewhere around 28 30 seconds this is my concern yes so or yes, uh, ammonia is a little bit high so any lab investigation which is of some concern it should come before your plans treatment plans and goals okay okay yes sir and in the end in the end you should based on all your notes your why this patient in the icu and the lab concern and this you should write down what are my daily goals okay. what i in coming 24 hours what should i want to achieve mm. whether i want to do a tracheostomy whether i want to change the fluid balance whether i want to make patient negative balance whether i want to give some drug therapy whether i want to do some procedure and these are the goals and what you are doing for those goals what this will note will help the other registrar or the other resident or the other consultant to know that these were the issues this year are my plans and also when you talk to relatives you can also counsel them very much very in a better way that these are the issues your patient is and having in the icu and these are my these are our plan for today so today we'll do this today we'll do that those viewers who are viewing this session uh, on the our channel uh, to them it may seems like that this is a very lengthy procedure to write in the icu the icu is so busy and you you don't have time to write this much but believe me we are using this template in our hospital and anyone uh, who starts writing this pattern of notes within a couple of few days one week to two weeks they become very comfortable in writing and it is not very hard to remember it gives you a better view of what is happening in the patient and as a bonus in the description link we have provided you a template blank template also a fill template to set you an example i hope those who are viewing will get some help from this our session of today's and 
if you want you can have animated version of this video also which is provided in the link so thank you thanks a lot